All right, you're good to go. Thank you. All right, everybody, welcome to the April 4th meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee or GOL. Uh, Athena, I haven't been reading the pursuant to the chapter 20 part. Um, do you, the legitimate question, do I need to read it every meeting? It's really over and above what we okay. are, are legally required to do. We do it as kind of a regular practice, but. We are, I'll, I'll go ahead, sounds fun. Uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by chapter 22 and 107 of the Acts of 2022, and extended again by chapter two of the Acts of 2023, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. I'm gonna go ahead and call us to order and check to make sure each member of the committee can hear and be heard. Let's start with Councillor Ryan. I'm here. Welcome. Councillor Ette? Here. Awesome. And Pat DeAngelis? Here. All right. So uh, Lynn has let us know she will be absent today um, and we will see her next time. Um, all right, we're gonna go ahead and start with public comment. If any members of the public would like to make a public comment of up to three minutes, you can go ahead and raise your hand in Zoom and we will call on you to make your comment. And I will give it about 30 seconds while I pull up the next thing as well. Okay, we are going to move on to seeing no hands. I'm gonna move on to the first item on our agenda, which is the Children's Mental Health Week proclamation. Um, and Andy Steinberg has emailed me to let me know he's being added as a sponsor to this um, proclamation. So if we could bring Andy in as a panelist. I think he's speaking on the. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I will pull this up since Lynn is not here. I'm happy to do edits. Hi. All right, thank you. Hi, Andy. Are you with us? Hey, editing. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm doing well. Welcome. Athena, what did you just ask me? Go, or if you want me to bring it up. Oh, um, I don't, if it's easy for you to do it, but I, I don't mind if you'd rather I do it. Do you have the updated, or the, I guess I only have the one in the pocket. Andy, is Mandy Joe joining us as well, or is it just you? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. I thought she would be here, but because uh, I was, I'm here really because of the other. Yeah, I'm wondering if we should maybe start with that one and see if Mandy Joe joins us. Would that make more sense? Is anyone else joining for the Jewish American Heritage Proclamation? No. Okay. Why don't we start with that one, and then um, that'll give give Mandy a chance if she's joining us. We obviously just started the meeting, so. Um, and then I think that, uh, yes, Councillor Ryan. So Andy is a sponsor for the uh, the Jewish proclamation or for the children's mental health or both? Both. Andy is going to be added as a sponsor for the children's mental health proclamation. Okay. Right. But um, Mandy, I believe, will be joining us. So we're going to start right now with Jewish American Heritage Month. All right. Thank you. Um, and with to that note, I believe, Andy, you had some updates to the version that we had in the packet um, that you sent me today. So let's do, Athena, what would you say is the best method to go about this if Andy has an updated version? Should I share the version Andy sent me or should we make the changes on this version? Not the most up-to-date version together now that would be great okay let me um if you stop sharing i'll share and andy i just want to confirm with you that this is the most up-to-date version that I, i'm now showing this is the one that you sent me uh earlier today i think the last part was yeah started. okay so Andy, it would be helpful for us if you could share because the committee didn't have this this version to view. If you, as we're going through it, could specifically identify what has changed in this one from the one that we had in our packets, that would be helpful. There's only one whereas class that has changed from what you had before. I believe that the 
sponsor list is correct. Okay, great. So, uh, Andy, is there, anything you, is there anything you'd like to say before we go through this line by line? I mean, in general terms, uh, it's the same proclamation that we've issued for the past several years. Uh, and uh, Dorothy Pam was a prime sponsor from the council side in prior years. And uh, we've, um, it has been a team approach to writing it with Rabbi Weiner as the uh, sort of lead community sponsor participating um, fairly fully. Uh, I think that it's probably not worth going through the whole thing section by section because you've seen it before, but I did want to highlight the one section that changed, which is the last whereas clause. And Basically, if you compare it with what was in prior years, and I think what was in the version that was in the packet, is, uh, it was dealing with the question of uh, anti-Semitism, but it was using uh, Anti-Defamation League as the source of information. And... Uh, we were looking for another approach to address the issue and with, with um, different um, updated statistics. And uh, so some of my fellow sponsors um, came up with uh, the FBI uh, piece that's noted and um, is available through the uh, footnote at the bottom, which uh, you can click onto and get to it. And uh, I think that it speaks for itself and it's just uh, using a different source for, for the statistical information, but covers the same topic. Okay, thank you. I know I have some slight grammatical edits to the paragraph that's been added just based on reading it now, but we are gonna just start at the beginning um, and we, we typically do go paragraph by paragraph. Like you said, Andy, this has gone through GOL in the past without changes having been made since then. So I don't anticipate anything major, but, um, I will give the, the GOL committee time to be pickier than committees past just in case. Um, so GOL, uh, please raise your zoom hand. If you see fit starting off any issues with the title or the sponsor list, I personally do not see any. Okay. Pat, if you're talking, you're muted. I just said I thought we could move on. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Doesn't take okay. long to. Um, next paragraph. First, whereas. Any issues here? Yes, Councillor Ette. I wasn't aware that this has gone through readings for several years. And so I was um, going to be nitpicky, but I'll refrain from that, but point out a few things. So for this paragraph, it has the 350 year history of Jewish contributions to America and American culture. And I was wondering when we speak of America, are we speaking of the American American continents or are we speaking of the United States? Any thoughts from other committee members? I, I, I believe they mean United States uh, of America. Councillor or Pat D'Angelis, did you have well, something? I sad to say I've never noticed that. And thank you. And I think we should change it. Councillor Ryan. Um, I would be cautious about changing the language. Uh, this is called the Jewish American Heritage Month Proclamation. And unless there's a, a matter of just confusion or, you know, so on, um, I think we should uh, let let it let it be. Okay. Um, Councillor Ette, do you feel strongly that this is uh, something that's not clear in the resolution and we should vote on a change? 
I will say that it jumped out at me the first time I read it, but I don't feel strongly enough. I guess um, just having it on the record is good enough for now. The only, I mean, the middle ground that I'm seeing here would be this first one, just change it to the United States of America, and then the remainder of them can stay America. That makes sense. Does that seem like it might clarify it for everyone? So it would be Councilor Ryan. Um, is the sponsor okay with it? I I was just about to ask. Yep, thank you. Uh, Andy, is that does that sound? I, did, okay? I, I think that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, next, whereas. Councillor Ate? I'm not sure of the house style, but the pro proclamation reads that. Should there be a comma after that? I think so, because then a quote starts. Yeah. Okay. Next, whereas, whereas throughout our history. Councillor Ate, your hand is still up. Is that a new one? Or remained it. Okay. Next one, whereas we celebrate, whereas as we celebrate. Councilor Arte? Oh, you're muted. Um, this is the All fits to work for Tikkun Olam, repair of the world. Um, I don't think it needs to be changed. I, oh, When I read it the first time, if I hadn't known what Tikkun Olam meant, the phrase repair of the world would have been a bit more confusing. I don't think it should go. I'm wondering if instead of um, commas, we could use a pair of dashes. Councilor Arte is proposing that it would read. Um, I just messed it up. Hang on. It would read like this. Are you saying delete the comma and put two dashes in? You could put in parentheses with quotes, or you could just put dashes. Um, I think for um, many members of the Jewish community, it's a phrase they know very well. Um, for um, members not of that community, it perhaps um, might help them to see that that's a translation of the Hebrew. I personally like that because there's also just a ton of commas in the sentence generally. So I think it breaks it up. Okay. Whereas in the expansion of faculty, Councilor Ate? Just speaking about time. Um, so the suggestion I had was during the expansion of faculty. Are there any objections to changing the word in to during? That's an improvement, I think. Great. Thank you for your nitpicking. And you said you were holding back too. So I'm a little. I know, that's a little. What your red line version is. Okay. <laughs> Andy, are you okay with this so far? Any any objections? I'm assuming you will raise them if you have them. Yes. Uh, why don't you just make that assumption? Thank you. Um, whoops. All right. Next one. Whereas the institutions of higher education. Now here, actually, I did have a thought. Um, have led in programs. Um, is the sense here have have um have been leaders in the united states or leaders in the world or uh, the phrase have led in programs um i think i know what you mean um but in a sense i don't really know what you mean because it's it's the idea is that um in the in the field of education uh, higher education essentially in the united states um you know uh 
Is that is that the sense? And is there any way to make that? Do we need to make it clear? Right. You're saying have they led in terms of being first to have them or have they been leaders within them? Within right. that field? Yeah. What what is the leadership here? Is it leadership in the sense of the country as a whole? Um, in in and the academic world in the United States and the academic world and, and throughout the world. Um I, I assume they don't mean just an Amherst. Um they they're referring to a, a much larger um so I don't I just that was just somewhat puzzling to me. Okay. Uh Andy, do you have any thoughts on this? Not on this one because I would really have to go back to some of our community sponsors. Uh, probably uh, maybe just leave it Hilda Green um, because uh, she'd have the most experience to know and probably was the source of <clears throat> the thought here because of uh, you know her her husband's role at the university over a long period of time I agree it's confusing um, I also I think we could if we wanted to move change the phrasing we could leave it or we could change it to uh institutions of higher education and amherst have um been leaders or i was going to say have have had programs that have like supported programs in counselor ette did you have a thought on this yes so I'll speak to this paragraph and i would like us to go back to the previous one for some reason i um skipped some things so when i read this what Across my mind is preeminence, as in that uh, UMass has programs that are leading programs, preeminent programs in Jewish studies. But um, I think what George says might um, also be significant, which is um, maybe UMass isn't just preeminent, but was the the forerunner of these programs. So it's it's unclear what it is. Counselor uh, Council D'Angelo, or Pat, sorry. Pat's, you can call me whatever, it doesn't matter. Just not Patsy or Patty. Um, Noted. I like the idea, have been leaders in, or I'm not sure how you said it now, George, have been leaders in... Um, developing programs in Jewish studies, including Holocaust and genocide studies. I think Councilor Ete has put his finger on it. It's the idea of preeminence, um, which um, maybe this captures. I'm going to remind us, I'm going to just gently remind us, we are looking for clarity, consistency, and actionability here. So whatever we do is towards those efforts and those efforts only. We are not co-sponsors of this, none of us on the committee are co-sponsors of this. So I want to just make sure that as we're thinking about edits, we're we're not seeking to change it. We're seeking to make it. Yeah, but I think this clarifies something important. I don't disagree. I just, I want to remind us of our purpose here. Councilor Ette? Um, I think I agree with you on that. So I'd like us to go to the previous paragraph. Okay. So are we, sorry. So before we do that, do we, are we good with this shift? No, seeing no objection. Okay. Great. The only thing I could offer yeah. is that uh, when you uh, complete your work on this um, and go on to other agenda items, I can try and call uh, sponsor Greenbaum and uh, ask her if she knows what the source of this was and if I can get an answer back from her. I can uh, come back on and raise my program. I won't be, I'll be back in the audience at that point, but I can always raise my hand if I have anything to contribute. So Andy, to that note, we can wait to vote on this until later on in the meeting, uh, if you'd like, so that any other edits can be made prior to our vote. If that works. It's just a matter of if you want to check on the basis on which this was included originally, because this is one probably that was where Dorothy Pam consulted numbers of people, put it together, and how she came to this, therefore, is something that I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't know if I can well reach Dorothy or not. 
I feel comfortable with the change we've made because I do not believe it changes the content of the words. I think it, it does just clarify what was there initially a bit. Um, I, I'll leave that up to you, Andy, if you'd like to. Counselor Ette, what was I would assume okay. that it's okay, and I'll let you know if she has an object, if I reach her and she has anything to say. Okay. But I would go ahead and just get it done okay. with. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I think I froze for a second, but it caught you up after. Um, okay, Counselor Ette, your comments on this paragraph. Late 1950s shouldn't have an apostrophe because we're speaking not of one year, but of several years. And that would also work for 60s as well. And then um, the who's, it isn't at all clear who is being referred to, who's concerned, the university or the faculty. I think it's the faculty based okay. on my reading, right? Let's see. Who, I can't, because it says, open to hiring Jewish faculty who, speaking of the Jewish faculty, went on to make significant contribution and who's going back to the same, I, I think the who and the who's tie back to the faculty, no? Yeah. That's yeah, I think it's okay the way it is. Okay, we're gonna jump forward. Where is the Yiddish Book Center? Okay. Next, whereas Amherst is part of the growing Jewish farming movement. Okay. Oh, Councillor Arte. Um, so you may not be able to hear this, but in the background actually is Jeopardy. And it seems I'm very slow on pointing to where we're supposed to go through. Um, I... I'm wondering about the comma after 1980. I do not have strong feelings, and so I'm happy to delete it if it if it feels true to you. It that makes sense to me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next one. Anything? Okay, we're back. We're on to this new one. Um, I had a couple in here. I think I just want to rework the phrasing. Um, when I read this, it's it's um, I think the way I have it in my head, it would read. Whereas according to a 2023 Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI report titled supplement to the 2021 hate crime statistics, comma, a total of 100 or 1,590 incidents related to religion were reported in the United States. I'm going to start with that and type it out. And can we go from there? Is that okay? Okay. Three Federal Bureau investigation report. Oh, hey. sorry. Hey. Sandy, shush. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to mute. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm glad everybody got to hear the the dog voices that we use in this house. <laughs> um, a total of uh, 1,590 incidents. Oh, this is what I was curious about. Is it, can we say hate related incidents or like incidents just feel so broad to me? Um, is it incidents or is it hate crimes? Oh, Andy, you're muted, sorry. I don't think like by me, muting myself. Uh, the um, I I looked at the report that's the piece that you get to when you do the click onto the link because mm -hmm. I wasn't the one who did the original writing. I did some editing because the wording was really awkward when it when I saw it the first time, um, but. That is the way that the FBI report, I think, stated it, if I recall correctly. Um, it oh. talked about the number of incidents <clears throat> related to religion, meaning um, hate crime incidents. 
Kelsa Ryan. I would just point out the title of the report is Supplement to the 2021 Hate Crime Statistics. That was so, what... Yeah, I think that would, uh, to most people reading it, they would assume that any incident in such a report would be an, an incident of hate crime. Okay. So not just... Okay. Right. So I All think right. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Incidents related to religion were reported. The largest category of religious hate crimes reported. I think this is what throws me, is we call it hate crimes here. We call it incidents here. Right. Um, yeah. Reported were anti-Jewish. Um, is anti-capitalized here? I know Jewish is, but I don't think it is capitalized. Shouldn't be, no. Okay. Uh, um, you make a good point. I don't know. Um, I think it should stay the largest category of religious hate crimes were reported were anti Jewish incidents. Well, that, they, right. they were more than half by some right. of the religion related, related incidents. incidents. So yeah. that comes directly from the report. I think it should stay there. Sorry, it should stay capitalized? No, no. Oh, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the whole rest of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Councillor Ryan? Done. Okay, Councillor Ate? Um, just wondering about the three instances of reported, or at least two, of reported and one of re re if we have any synonyms we could use. Um, okay, hang on. I feel like we could just take out the second reported. Yeah. I think, I, I, again, we need to be careful. Um, we're not stylists. Um, it, yeah. This is clear. It's really about clarity. Okay. And, um, this is clear. Um, okay. I think so. Let's let's not get too picky about you know how I'd write it or you'd write it unless we feel there's a, a clear confusion or some kind of unclarity. We're trying to correct. And here I think it's just we're getting into style, and I don't think that matters. Thank and you, George. That's that's a good reminder. I I agree with you. Um. All right. Last last now therefore. Or only now, therefore, sorry. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, Andy, are you comfortable with us voting on this item now? Any edit, if you have amendments, you can bring them to the council as well. If they're, if that paragraph is, if we did it incorrectly and I'll hey, say uh -huh. You know, I'm comfortable with it, and I'll just consult with uh, Hilda if I don't get her tonight, then gives me a little more time. Yeah, no worries. Um, all right, then I move to find the Jewish American Heritage Month proclamation for 2024 clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? Second, D'Angelo. Thank you. Oops, uh, sorry, and, it's okay, and I'm going to call the vote. Councilor Ette? Aye. Councilor Pat D'Angelis? Aye. I am an I and Councillor Ryan. Aye. All right. Thank you. That passes unanimously with well, well, passes three in favor, none opposed, one absent. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And Athena, I'm going to email it to you right now so I don't forget. Um, okay. Wait, what was the vote again? It was four in favor, and none opposed, one absent. One, and one, one absent. Can... Three and four are basically interchangeable, George. Uh, okay. Do well amended. If I don't do this now, I will forget. So I'm just doing it now. Go ahead. Okay. We're going to move on to our next proclamation. Uh, we still do not have Mandy here, but um, we're going to just quickly go through the um, 2024 Children's Mental Health Week proclamation. Andy, you're welcome to stay in for this if you'd like. All right. This is my reminder. We are doing not stylistic changes, just clarity, consistency, and actionability. Okay, so I've made one edit uh, so far because Councillor Steinberg or Councillor Han Haneke informed me that Councillor Steinberg was being added as a sponsor. That's my only edit so far. Okay, uh, Councillor Ryan. So um, I take it there are actually two different proclamations. One was about 
awareness and this one's about acceptance and so that's this is a totally different proclamation this the last one we did was child abuse aware awareness month this one is children's mental health okay yeah they are different they're no, different things about abuse so there are three of them mm, which one awareness is one? awareness acceptance and abuse uh Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm just <laughs> that uh, sentence was funny. Um, I think that this the title of this one was uh, we had been calling it mental health awareness, but it was mental health acceptance. I think we okay. had the title wrong. All right. Okay. Yeah. Right. There are There's only the, two. Right. the week is called Children's Mental Health Awareness Week, but that's a, that's a, that's a, an event. This is a resolution or proclamation. Excuse me. And, we okay. should. We should check that because in the proclamation, it's referred to as mental health acceptance. Week. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. But we're going to start at the beginning. So uh, we've got counselors Haneke and Steinberg already. No. Okay. Go ahead. Counselor Ache. First, where us? Oh, no, please um, continue. I... <laughs> no, no, no. Was it about the first one? No, I... I don't know if this plays into clarity, but it is Children's Mental Health Awareness Week, but hinged on children and youth. And um, I was wondering, is there a distinction or is there no distinction between children and youth? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, anyone else have insights into... I think because it's utilized so often, I believe that children is probably referring to like under 16 and youth is under 18, but I don't know. Um, that would be my guess. I, I think that because I think that having both of them makes it more clear, not less clear. And so I would, I'd lean on the side of taking it in versus going through and taking it out everywhere. Just to be clear, I didn't intend to take it out. It was more clarity for my sake. I think it's a valid question. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, second, whereas any issues? Third, whereas? Uh, just, I don't know whether to raise this here or later because there's a, a separate whereas clause way down that seems to say pretty much the same thing. So. Um, I don't know if we want to deal with that now. So yeah, you've got your cursor was this right. This one and this one. Yeah, they, I don't see a lot of difference and I'm wondering if one of them can be taken out. Or maybe there's a difference and I'm just missing it. I think that this one is stronger and I do think they're saying exactly the same thing. No, no. So we would move to strike this one because it is confusing to have It's, re it's repetitive and it, it's just saying the same thing again. It seems, unless... The sponsors feel that it's it's set make I just don't see a different point here. And um, I, yeah. I'm gonna ask one of you all to keep an eye on the participants list just in case Mandy joins. Um mm -hmm. if that's okay. Thank you. Uh she's not here yet, but or she's not here, but um no, I agree, George. I think that this is a really repetitive paragraph. So I, just, I recommend striking it. Okay. Um, next one, whereas children and youth with the most intensive needs. Intense needs. Sorry, intense needs. Yeah, fine. Whereas it is important, this one changes the word to adolescence. <laughs> I, I caught it before you said anything, Counselor Ate, because I knew I knew it. I knew it. Um, I agree that it's not consistent. I do not think that it's so inconsistent that it's a problem. But I think it's worth noting for this for next year to the sponsors. Uh, next, whereas, whereas the involvement and partnership. But I do think that answers our question a little bit more. I, I, yeah, I think it should just be children <laughs> and youth. I mean, it's just, I mean, take right. of consistency for, you know. All right. All right. I, I was think, trying to buy. No, I no, no. But advice. yeah, it's <laughs> right. Um, okay. Again, less sponsors want to make a point about it, but they're, yeah, they don't, right. Or yeah. change it all to add uh, children. All oh, right, let's, let's not get wild, y'all. We've right. got so okay. much more to do today. Let's move um, on. <laughs> wait till we, 
you're causing a nuisance preview of coming attractions. Okay. Uh, uh, Counselor Haneke is now in the attendee group. Amazing. We can ask her. Uh, Athena, could you bring Counselor Haneke in to the room? On it. Thank you so much. Welcome, Mandy. I'm sure you've really missed GOL. Uh, so welcome back. We have got a couple questions for you. Okay. Okay. So I just want to run you really quickly through the changes we made so far. As you see on the screen, we've got the resolution uh, or the proclamation pulled up. What is the proclamation? So George pointed out this paragraph right here, our nation's future is very much a, um, oh, I lost it. Where did it go, George? Right here is very much a duplicate in terms of meaning of this paragraph down here. So we just cut the shorter one. That's um, fine. Okay. And then we, our main question centered around the difference between children and youth. And then in one place, the term adolescence was used. Could you clarify the difference between children and youth? And would you prefer the term youth or adolescence? Or is it intentionally adolescence here and nowhere else? Um, so I think youth is intended to refer to adolescents and older children and children is sort of like elementary aged and younger. Um, the, most of this, nearly all of it comes from a standard proclamation put out by an organization. Um, and I think that's what I gathered um, that that was what they were referring to in sort of a split difference of that. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I turned my video off because my internet connection got a little unstable. So I apologize for my video being off. I am still here. Counselor Ryan. So Mandy, our rationale was just to be consistent um, and uh, to use children and youth. Um, so that's why we made that change because it's used the children and youth everywhere else. Mandy, is that okay? Are we? Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Next one. Uh, is this where we are? Yeah. Involvement and partnership of family. Mm -hmm. Is there a question? Councilor Arte, did you have your hand up? No. Okay, you put it down. Sorry. Uh, I had my hand up. Oh, you did. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm wondering how, how the sentence reads, whereas the National Federation of Families initiated children's mental health acceptance week together with families um i'm wondering the identity of these families is there a specific families or it's broadly families um mandy I'm not sure I quite understand the question. Involvement of family members of the children and youth. It, are, are you saying, is that like a specific type of family member or is it? I think I've lost track of where we I are. Uh, we're on this paragraph right here. Oh, were you talking about this one? Okay, I think I was speaking about the you one speaking that about... the whereas the National Federation yeah. of oh, okay. initiated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you're saying this was the family's part yes. in question. Since we're speaking about initiation, to initiate something would imply that the actors are visible, something specific, but the Family seems vague. Um, so would it say, oh, sorry, Council uh, Pat? I think it sh should simply read that the National Federation of Families initiated, blah, 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 to focus on the acceptance because 
when it says together with families, it's a federation of families. So I think <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to have. It's still it. Yeah. It's implied in the federation. Mandy, do you have an issue if we strike this? No. Okay. All right. We can do this. Whereas good mental health is a key component in a child's healthy development. Any issues here? My question is on the next one. It has said acceptance everywhere else. And then it says awareness here. I just want to confirm that we call it Mental Health Awareness Week. Every, everything else is Acceptance Week. So they changed the name this year. Okay. So <laughs> I was uh, wondering, that, that. at the beginning, before, I think before you got here, we were like, what's it called? <laughs> yeah, so it, this is the first year it's being called Me Children's Mental Health Acceptance Week. In the past, it's always been Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. So should we change this to be acceptance or is our, are we calling our week awareness week? I believe the title of the proclamation this year, did I change it to acceptance? You did. I did. So but in 2021, we celebrated it as awareness week. <laughs> How about... Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. I think that's fine because it does, it clarifies it down here that we're calling it acceptance week this year. So I think that that's, we'll figure it out next year. <laughs> okay, I'm moving on y'all. We got, we got so much on the agenda. I'm yes, we need here. to move on. Uh, complex mental health needs. Okay, this year's theme. Uh, this wait, hang on. This doesn't really make sense to me. In celebrating this year's theme, lighting the path to social justice for children and youth, it is fitting and to increase public awareness. Help and me out here. Is and sorry. No, you're fine. Okay. Um. Now, therefore. Looks great. We're good. Yep. Okay, um, I move that GOL find the 2024 Children's Mental Health Acceptance Week proclamation clear, consistent, and actionable as edited. Is there a second? There's no second. Seriously, guys? I second. Thank you. Um, I was calling the vote. I gotta remember who's on my committee. Pat. Aye. Councilor Ate. Aye. Councilor Ryan. Aye. And I am an aye as well. That is four in favor. Got the math right this time. Zero opposed, one absent. Andy and Mandy, thank you very, very much for, for joining us for this. Um, I appreciate it a lot, Athena. Thank also... you for your attention to the proclamations. We are nothing if not detailed. Um, all right, thank you both. So we are going to now move. And Mandy, I'm saying this quickly before you leave because I don't know if you want to day for the, I don't know if we have a quorum, if you stay, we do, I think. Freck, are you on CRC? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we have to boot, I think we have to boot Mandy back to the audience. Yep, okay. Um, so we are now going to, actually, wait, do we still have a quorum of CRC? What? Who's on, who's, Pat, are you on CRC? Yes. Councilor Ate, are you on CRC? When you discuss nuisance bylaw, I can go away. I'm gonna defer to Athena on what to do here. Athena, we were gonna bring uh, the chair of CRC into the room, but that would give us a quorum of that committee. Do you have a recommendation on what we should do? Yeah, I, as long as, um, I, I think it's fine to bring Pam in as long as um, she's not uh, engaging in the deliberation with the committee. So the committee can ask questions about what's going on, but I'm gonna say that as long as she's not, you know, participating in the discussion and, and conversation about the vote, then that's fine. So Okay, thank I you. I brought Pam in. And then, yeah, if Mandy wants to come in, I think no, that's she's, it. she's already left. Okay. She's Pam, like, nah. You're good. Thanks for coming in, Pam. I'm assuming that you heard what I said about participating just as a, um, to give some information to the committee and not participating in the discussion so that we don't get into a, a deliberation. You're muted, so 
<laughs> Sorry, we we're talking when I was talking, but I couldn't hear you. I heard that I should just give facts, information, and you all will deliberate. Thank you very, very much, ma'am, and welcome. Um, Councilor Ryan, would you like me to give Pam an opportunity to give an overview first, or do you want to jump in? I just I just had a question, I guess a point of order. Um, I probably just missed it, but we're changing the agenda. Order. Um, oh, sorry. Yes, I was just about to say that. I'd like to move this up on the agenda because we have Pam with us to discuss it, um, and because we're going to see where we get with this, um, but it is on the council agenda for Monday tentatively. We may not, we may have to pull it from the council agenda if we don't uh, vote it tonight, but I wanted to um, respect Pam's time and bump this up. Thank you for pointing that out though. I appreciate it. So unless there's any objections from the committee, I'd like to move this uh, up on the agenda to discuss it next. Okay, seeing none. Pam, welcome. Pam is here as the chair of the CRC committee uh, and we are looking at the Proposed bylaw 3.26, nuisance property. Um, Pam, do you want to give us an overview of this before we I'd jump be in? Happy, happy to. And I also acknowledge that we have two CRC members here who also participated in this. Um, sorry, I wasn't dressed for a meeting tonight. <laughs> um, oh, oh, an overview. Um, the nuisance bylaw was acknowledged as needing an update. Uh, pretty early on in the process when we discussed the uh, rental registration bylaw. They are separate, they are standalone, and ultimately uh, they are, in fact, almost entirely standalone. <clears throat> At the beginning, we tried to link nuisance infractions with the ability to obtain a rental permit, and that was uh, ultimately struck down However, in the rental registration bylaw that we started to talk about on Monday, um, a, a, cause of, a cause of losing a permit or a consideration of losing a permit might in fact be tied to um, sort of the amount of nuisance caused by that particular property. So the, the, the rental registration bylaw addresses that the nuisance bylaw does not say anymore X number of infractions might lose you your permit. So that's kind of in, in general. Um, I think the I think the intention ought to be clear and that is it's it's never our goal to penalize uh, for for um, bad behavior, if you will but actually to correct the actions that disturb other people's quiet enjoyment of their residence. So um, that said, we, we crafted a bylaw that bolsters what we currently have in the books, and it broadened the scope from being primarily a nuisance house, party place, serving alcohol to underage students, underage people, and um, and it broadened it a little bit to say that um, a we don't differentiate between a rental property or a, uh, a owner occupied property. Um, it does clarify that the owner and and manager, but especially the owner, is notified on the third offense so that they have a, a bit of skin in the game and they are able to uh, from the start establish guidelines for behavior appropriate to their rental. And we felt that it was important. They're, they are already um, uh, engaged in the process in today's bylaw, but we just made it much clearer. Um, May I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Pam. Um, I just have a point of order from the chair, um, for the chair. We have in front of us a document that has a whole host of comments by the lawyers Yes. on this document. And I assume that that's what we're going to be talking about. That and, is what we're doing. and we are just concerned with clarity, consistency, and actionability. That's correct. Um, Councilor Rooney is giving an excellent sort of uh, presentation that she will give again to the council, explaining the origin and logic and purpose of this bylaw. But I think, unless I'm mistaken, we're not interested in the origin purpose of this bylaw. We're just interested in the lawyer's comments and whether the sponsors are okay with them 
and whether this document is clear, consistent, and actionable. Um, so I, I would like us to to get to that. Um, so yeah, or am I got, missing something here? Uh, not really. But we're not just concerned with the lawyer's comments. We're looking at this as a whole document, um, just as we would if there weren't a legal opinion. We'd be looking at the bylaw for clarity, consistency, actionability. Right. We're not just looking at the legal comments that were received back, although we can we can certainly see if there are questions that um, the the way Athena framed it beautifully, and I'm gonna try to repeat it and then she can tell me how I did it right or wrong. But uh, if the answer to one of the questions asked by the legal team is a matter of clarity, consistency or actionability, it is appropriate for us to try to answer that question. If it is not, that is something that CRC needs to handle themselves. Um, but we are looking at this document, yes, for clarity, consistency, actionability, not substantive review. Right. So I would think we should just go directly to the document and to the changes that have been made in it, um, okay. sort of section by section, um, and figure out what has to go to CRC for their determination and what, if anything, we might want to examine uh, from the point of view of clarity, consistency, and actionability. I, a legal decision really is about actionability, if I understand it. Um, you know, And so that CRC is going to have to deal with that um, and responds to the lawyer's concerns. So I, I think we should just go to the document and just work our way through it, or at least start to. I don't know if we can get through it all tonight because we have I, other things we have to do. I know, I know. So I, you um, know, I, I'm not sure that this is, in my mind, priority number one given all the other things we're trying to do, but that's a decision that we'll have to make as a group, I guess. Thank you. I am going to give us, uh, I, I've got timing in my head. I'm, I'm not going to say it out loud because I don't want to be um, wrong on my timing. So I'm, but I have timing in my head. Uh, Athena? I think what, what Pam is sharing about the purpose of the bylaw is going to be helpful in terms of actionability because the Larry. committee is going to be, I said actionability on purpose, <laughs> Councillor DeAngelis, in terms of actionability, because the committee wants to make sure that the bylaw is doing the thing that it sets out to do. So what Pam is sharing about the intent of the bylaw is important for the conversation about actionability. You want to make sure that the intent of the bylaw is meeting the text of the bylaw. Um, if there are questions about enforcement, I spoke with Captain uh, Chief Ting this morning, and um, I can get him on to make sure that the enforcement is in line with the intent of the bylaw, if there are any changes in terms of the language um, in that regard. Thank you. Uh, Pam, is there anything you didn't say about the um, intent that you would like to add? I, I had a couple more points that would just help perhaps give a little bit of a context in your in your consideration. I have to admit, I only saw the, the, the KP law comments late this afternoon, I think when I actually asked you for them, I had not found them in my email yet, but they had been sent to me. Um, just a couple other things. We um, we identified an opportunity to seek response costs. That is something that KP Law uh, responded to. Um, and we also include activities that are deemed a violation of state law, which is possession and underage drinking. We also include violations of zoning bylaw, which is new, and that is excessive lighting, parking, and then general bylaws, including noise, road and sidewalk obstruction, littering and refuse collection. So those are sort of the, the broad categories that, that constitute nuisance. And I'd be happy to just be quiet and listen to your conversation. Okay. Um, Athena, do we need to move Pam back to the audience or can she stay here? She can stay if you have questions okay. about what CRC did in terms of, you know, what language they chose and so on, then she can answer those questions. I've been trying to awesome. stop doing a thumbs up because I'm doing my um, scuba diving certification and this is like emergency, go back to the surface, but I can't break the habit. So you'll see me do a lot of this today. All right. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen again. If I start to freeze, I may, Athena, ask you to, to switch um, to sharing screen. I don't know if that's part of the problem, but. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to start off. Okay. Here we go. Um, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to just start, I'm going to say numbers and letters. Um, and if you've got thoughts on it, uh, again, not stylistic, 
clarity, consistency, actionability. Um, and we will look at also the legal comments as well. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Starting with purpose, any, and I can't really see, um, please use your, raise your zoom hand because it pops you up to the top of my window. So I'll see you. All right. No issues with a moving to B definitions. Um, Comment one was, do we want to define number of people which constitutes a party or a crowd? Yes, Pam. Our current bylaw also talks about um, parties and gatherings, and it is it is a continuation of the same um, phraseology that the APD is used to at this point. Okay, thank you. Councilor Ryan? So I have a question if I may. Of course. Uh, um, if I understood Pam correctly, she's not really had a chance to look at this before either. Um, or is that not true? I mean, this is, I mean, my sense is this should go to CRC. They should go through it and 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 clarify and answer the questions the lawyers have raised, we've raised the number here that we certainly are not capable of answering. Um, and then it should come back to us. And then we can go through this exercise. I don't see the point of us going through it tonight um, since so many of these comments are things we simply can't determine. It has to be determined by the sponsors um, and what they want to do. Um, um, and I, I also would like to just point out that actionability, actionability is actually defined in our documents um, as basically related to Mass General Law, our charter, and our bylaws. That's all it's concerned with. Um, so... Um, I would suggest that this uh, should go to CRC. They should have a chance to go through it and 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 make the changes they want to make in response to the lawyers, and then it should come back to us. Uh, Athena, would George have to make that as an actual motion? Um, I don't know. Just, how do, how do you want to handle it? And, yeah, we're just reviewing it, and I don't see how we can review it without um, CRC coming back to us with their answers to these questions. And then whatever's left, um, we can we can then offer our, our input. Okay, so I, as chair, could just send this back to Pam and say, please have CRC review this and send it to us when you're done. Athena, without going through an official vote on that. I mean, unless Pam feels that, that these questions are all questions that GOL can possibly answer, I just don't think they are. Um, and it sounds like she's hadn't had the chance with her committee to review the, the lawyer's comments. I so, know the committee has not had a chance. Okay, to. then I, I don't see the point of us proceeding. Okay. Um, Athena, is there any reason why I can't? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Pam. I would say, I, I would, I think I would prefer to have a motion saying, you know, this material just came back from KP Law and we're not ready to review it until CRC has has worked through the the wording and an adjusted wording to the um, uh, approval, if you will, of of the attorney. So and that way, sort of a formal pass back rather than just showing up at our desk. So it would be a motion to um, request CRC review of the legal edits prior to GOL consideration. Athena, does that work? If that's what you want to do, I mean, GOL normally does this legal review, so I, I'm a little confused, but it's up to you if you want to send it back to CRC, then, then make a motion. Councilor Ryan, you've had a lot well, of- Well, if, if we do this legal review, then let's go do it. I mean, I've, I haven't been on this committee in two years. Um, I don't remember uh, having to do this kind of thing, but if, if GOL does this kind of legal review, I just don't see how we can answer some of these questions. Um <laughs> My recollection is that GOL is typically the committee that requests a legal review. And so we get something, we ask for a legal review, the legal team sends it back to us to take their thoughts. I don't know that GOL has had legal review that's to this extent um, before. I think that that's what's throwing us off, right? Is that there's a lot in here from, from the legal team. Um, and as we go through it, there may be things that we feel go that the answers to the questions would be beyond clarity, consistency, and actionability. I think that if that's the, the point that 
count that counselors feel we are at, it would make sense to send it back to CRC. If you feel that answering the questions posed by the legal team would be stepping out of our bounds, then, then we should reasonably send this back to CRC. If the answers to these questions are matters of clarity, consistency, and actionability, we should handle it. I look at this and I do see some that might be beyond it. And I see some that we could absolutely handle. So I, I can go either way. Um, I, I, what I don't want to have happen is us to go through and respond to something and then it go to the council and have CRC say, why did you answer this? We had a totally different idea. Um, that's the only thing I don't want to have happen. Councillor Ette. Um, this is a question for Councillor Rini. Is there a, a time sensitivity to this particular, what, what we have before us? Because if there isn't, then I would join um, Councillor Ryan in sending it back to the CRC so we could have a look at it. Pam? This is not time sensitive. The re rental registration is more time sensitive because it it asks for consideration in the town budget. This does not. This is already be being implemented by our building commissioner and or uh, police department. So it would be just a sort of an update of what they're currently doing and broadening it a little bit. So I the short answer no. It doesn't really affect the timing of it, or we're not affected by the timing of it, excuse me. Thank you. Athena? Um, I can help uh, frame a motion if that's what you're interested in. The The council's um, process for the past, I'd say a couple of years has been to send bylaws to committee for development, especially CRC for the rental registration bylaw. They worked for a long time on that. And then once CRC had um, finished their work on it, went to GOL, GOL did this kind of legal review with input from the town attorney, and then it came back to the council, ultimately went back to CRC for further work, and now it's now it's coming back to the council. But that's the process that the practice that we've had for quite some time is for a bylaw to go to a committee, and then the last pass is at GOL for that legal review, and the KP law part usually comes at this point. So I don't see this as a very different practice from in the past, but if you'd like to um, request CRC have input before GOL takes action on it, then I would suggest a motion to request CRC uh, review the feedback from the town attorney and um, report back to GOL. Councilor Ryan, would you like to make that motion? Uh, no, maybe what we need to do um, is follow Athena's guidance because she's had experience with this committee for the last two years. And But I would then simply, as a courtesy, ask that we put this on our next agenda at the top and so we can work our way through it uh, systematically and carefully and, um, and follow the process that has been followed before. I do feel there are a number of things here. I'm not quite sure what I would say tonight about these things. I really haven't had a chance given other things that we've been doing and working on um, to look at this in the detail it requires. So um, rather than try and wing it, um, I get, I don't know, maybe others feel differently, but I would like to have a chance to look at this in greater care with greater detail. And then we will do uh, what Athena has said we've done in the past. Um, and uh, at that point, um, if we feel there are things that we have to send to CRC, then we will. So maybe we should hold off on a motion and, and I would just ask that we postpone this to a future, to our, to our next meeting and put it at the top of the agenda. I guess that's what I would ask. Okay. Uh, Pat? Uh, I can see putting it on the next agenda, but I that makes no sense not to have CRC look at it and they meet next week, I believe. Um, no? Not until the 30th. Okay. But it does seem if if we're going to look at it and then send it back to them anyway, why not give it to them first and have it come back to us so that we can just go through it? Because we just look at the amount of time we've taken just now just to figure this out. And so what we're saying is we're going to move it. We'll look, do what we can. Then we'll send it to them. So why not just send it to them and then have it come back? 
Okay, I'm gonna need someone to either make a motion or start making some edits. That's where I'm at now because we are at 8.30. So um, if someone would like to make a motion to send this to CRC, let's do it. If someone's ready to dive in, let's do that. Councilor Ryan. There's still, this, there is a third option, which is just to put this off to the next meeting. Absolutely. We can also do that. Um, I will not be at the next meeting. Councilor Ette, are you comfortable leading this discussion at the next meeting? Yes, I am. It's the help of everyone, especially Athena. Okay. Um, so I would like to thank Pam very much for coming to this meeting. And I apologize that we're not digging in deeper. I think if you're able to join us for the next one, you're welcome to, but I think you've given us the overview. So I don't know if you need to, um, but if you wanna observe, you're welcome to, to observe those deliberations. Um, in the meantime, is there a reason why Pam can't share this with CRC? I already have. Oh, great. I was going to say it's a public, it's in our folder, so there's no reason why not. Okay. I sent it to those, oh, had, I sent it to those who hadn't received it um, today, for today. Okay. Um, but I was going to ask, when is your next GOL meeting? Our next GOL meeting is the 18th or the 19th. It's the um, not next Thursday, but the Thursday after the 18th okay. at 7.30. Okay. Um, all right. With that, we are going to, uh, I don't know that we need to formally, po formally postpone it because we did kind of talk about it a little bit, but we will continue this at our next meeting. Um, yes, Pam. I just want to say thank you. And I'm going to sign off. I yeah. am not going to be able to make it to a meeting on the 18th, but if you would like some representation, we have Councilor Ete and Pat DeAngelis. Oh my gosh. And so they they should be able to answer that if you would like to have someone else like jennifer or mandy show up um i'm sure either of them would be willing if they are available so thank uh, you for tonight, thank everybody. you very very much appreciate thank it thank you okay all righty we're gonna bump back up to non-voting finance committee member appointment yes no. Um, this did you just say yep nope <laughs> on that George non um, voting finance committee this member. one has I not received any new CAFs to my no, yeah I, I know didn't. that's what I said sorry I think I froze for a minute um, okay so we are on the, the finance committee I'm just double checking I don't believe we have received any new CAFs for this committee is there anyone who would like to make a motion otherwise we will move on 2024 Charter Review Committee Appointment Recommendations to the Town Council. Uh, yeah, Pat, you're muted, but yeah. I'm sorry, I'm, I didn't move quickly. My, uh, there was a CAF that came in yesterday or today that didn't list what they were applying for. And it just said something like all committees. Oh. Um, I can, tr I, so I don't know whether we would include that in this pool or not. Let me check on that. Yeah, I think I missed that. Thank you. Um, okay, well, we, we can come back to it. But let's move on to the other. Oh, Athena, did you unmute to, to check on it already? I'm checking now. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead, don't wait. You're good. I was pulling up my document. Um, all right, so... I have been tracking the number of CAFs that we've received for the Charter Review Committee, and I'm just wanting to double check my numbers because I know George also tracks um, as well. I am seeing that we have 16, 17? No, 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 no. I have 19, actually. 19? Oh, I missed one. Yep. Sorry. Well, that's the 18. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I have on. 19. Um, Did you take away the person who withdrew? I, I don't know who the person was who withdrew. And uh, so um, maybe that's the difference. But um, and, and how I'll, do we find this out? And I mean, it would be helpful if we had a folder on SharePoint that had all the caps in it and we could go and find them. As I reached out to Athena, I reached out to you. Somehow I lost, uh, I don't know how, um, four or five caps. 
um, I've searched diligently through uh, my uh, counselor email and they've just disappeared. Now, I'm sure I must have done something, but I can find all the others. But there are one, two, three, four, five calves that have, that have just gone. And it would be really helpful if we just put them all. I mean, I should have done this myself. I should have just put them into a file um, and then I would have them. But I left them on our uh, mail account. And usually you can find them very easily by typing in a search term. And uh, all of them turn up, but not those five. So um, you have 18. I have 19. Does anyone actually know how many we have? I'm, also, I'm, at, I'm at 18. Um, 18. Okay, good. Athena, are you, but that includes the one that I think was a, a withdraw. I mean, sorry, does not include. Athena, are you um, able to pull a complete response list versus searching through emails? I can do that. Um, Pat had asked a question about somebody who submitted a CAF that was, that didn't indicate what, they what, want. what committee. Yeah. I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing Charter Review Committee, Planning Board, Charter Review Committee, Finance That's Committee. That's what I saw, CBA. yeah. So I don't see one where someone didn't indicate. I can I can pull down a list. Um, Could be my mistake, but I thought I, I remember looking at it twice. But I'll see if I can find it yeah. later. It's not important. Yeah. Um, so what other committees, um, CRC and GOL, in the past had done was when those CAFs came in email, they just saved them and put them in a folder, and the chair took care of that. I'm sort of trying to manage the website and SharePoint for. I think all the council committees at this point, plus BCG and JCPC. So I'm going to ask for your patience. Um, uh, if you don't, if you don't want to take that on, then I can I can pull down a list and give you a spreadsheet next time you look. I can it's just do difficult it. to keep on top of all of those things for all the different committees. Yes. Yes. But yeah, I encourage I, you to create a folder on your computer. Okay. So individual. Okay. So you're okay. Sorry, I'm pulling my head together. I will create a folder in the GOL committee file and put PDFs of the CAFs in that folder. And I will do that tomorrow. Thank you. Um, and I'm putting it on my calendar so that I do it tomorrow. Um, in the meantime, Athena, are you able to confirm our number? Is it an easy download or do you have to go through and search the emails just like we do? I can download a list. It would be helpful if you'd be able to confirm just the number for us. Um, today, I believe we're at... Sounds like we're 18. Had, well, I think I had accidentally counted a planning board one when I just went back through. So oh. I think it would be good to double check. I, I think it's 19. I need to check because okay. there was there was one other person who withdrew besides the person okay. who withdrew prior to January 20. So I think we have 18. Okay. All right. With that, we have 18 tentatively community activity forms for the 2024 Charter Review Committee. We have we will need to um, make a motion to approve the sufficiency of the applicant pool. Mr. Ryan. I move to declare the pool sufficient. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councillor Ette. Uh, I'm gonna call the vote, Pat. Can we uh, can we discuss it just briefly? Oh, um, of course. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure the public would like to understand, and I would like to understand myself, actually, in my own mind, um, why this has taken as long as it's taken. Um, uh, my feeling was that a committee of this size, um, I still think it's too large, but it's nine. That's what it is. Um, we should have at least twice as many applicants as, as uh, people were going to recommend. I'd like to have more. Um, it was pointed out at the last council meeting that um, just because we declare the pool sufficient this evening, if we do, um, people can still apply and I'm hoping they will. Um, uh, my personal feeling is the more the merrier, but I think, um, I personally believe this, I don't know if any of the other committee members feel that at this point, 18 um, is, is, is a sufficient number. It's not an ideal number, I'd like more, 
but I think we can move ahead. So that's my thinking. I don't know if others share that, but that's that's. I just wanted to put that out there so people understand um, why it's taken as long as it's taken and why tonight I at least would like to declare the, the pool sufficient. Thank you. Any other discussion? Councilor Ate? Um, I'd like to second what um, Councilor Ryan said. I don't think it can be emphasized enough that this is an opportunity for members of our community to participate in the political process. And being that that is the case, even though we are declaring, the, we will be voting to declare the pool sufficient, there's still room for those who are interested in participation to still proceed if they can and increase the numbers. Because again, the more we have, the better it will be to figure out how to end up with those who will be on the committee. Thank you, Councilor Ate. Sorry for turning my camera off. My internet started freezing again. Um, I appreciate that, both of you. And, and yes, encourage people to please continue to submit CAFs for this committee. Um, and yeah, it's not, this is not the stop point for those coming in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call the vote now at this point. We are voting to find this pool sufficient. Councilor Ryan? Aye. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Councilor Ate? Aye. And I am an aye. Y'all, we did it. Um, well, we didn't do it. People applying did it, but thank you. So we need to now look at, because we have found the pool sufficient, we can move on to the next step in George's really handy sample timeline that he created a, many years ago um, for FinCom that I'm basing this off of. According to that timeline, we typically want to give about um, three weeks for these interviews to happen. Uh, we hopefully will not experience a major melt rate. And um, so we should plan sufficient time. So we're looking at around early May for this. I don't know if it makes sense for us to try to figure this out tonight, or if you'd like for me to um, come back, I can actually send this to Councilor Ate for the next meeting, um, which I won't be there, but I can send some kind of sample or some, some recommendations for when deadlines for statements of interest as well as uh, interview dates might be, if that's something people would find helpful. I, I guess I'm looking for some advice from the committee on what the best way to move forward is, if you want to hash it out tonight or if you want me to send ideas. Councilor Ryan? I think it would be helpful if you could, if you had time, to simply sit down and make up a calendar um, and then share it with the committee um, for us to review. I don't think it makes sense for us to try and do this as a group. I think it's something that you've got a model from previous times that hopefully will be helpful. And you've got the calendar in front of you. And I would just you know, take a few minutes and, and put together what you think of as a reasonable uh, calendar and then uh, put that in SharePoint or share it with the committee uh, for the next meeting for us to review and discuss. Um, I think that, I think the the other issues that we do need to discuss, if not tonight, very soon, is do we want, what time do we want to do this? How much time can we give to it? Um, there's some just practical questions, but I think a calendar is something that would be very helpful if you could just produce it and then we could look at it. And if we had any changes, we could recommend them. But Okay, thank you. That's really helpful. Um, Let's figure out that first part that you talked about today about how much time, because that's going to inform the calendar that I put together. Um, so if we assume that we are going to be interviewing 18 people, um, we have our interview questions and I need to pull them up to make sure I've got how many we, we um, are looking for here. All right. <laughs> Actually, right? Anna, I have a, a very particular question for everybody. Do we want to do all of them in one night? I mean, maybe you had experience with this and you were able to get through. I mean, we could have 20, 25 by the time we're done. Um, are we going to do 20 or 25 people all in one evening? Um, and the answer may be yes, um, but I think we need to, to think that through. Um, maybe some of you have had experience with that large a, a pool. With, and also we have to ask how many questions. So if we are doing a large number of people, we might want to try and cut our questions down to a fewer yeah. number. Um, but 
first of all, do we want to do everybody in one sitting? And do we want to do it at night? I think night probably is the only time we can do it. Um, but uh, there's that question and how many. Anyone have an answer for Councillor Ryan? I mean, given experience others have had, like Pat, yourself, yeah. Anna, um, obviously Freke and I um, haven't had recent experience at all. Um, I have not ever dealt with that larger group. Large number, yeah, exactly. Not I don't this think. Large. Yeah, so no. do it over two nights. Um, do it all it, at once. That's the first it question. It seems like doing it all at once would be kind of ridiculous. I think that we would just end up being tired and overwhelmed. So I think that it should be two nights. The question if we do it in two nights is, are we unfairly advantaging the people on the second night because they will have gotten to watch the first night? Well, remember, they all get the same questions and many of them tend to just read their answers. Um, again, it's not my idea of how to do this, but it's the way we do it. So um, I don't see that that's a real issue. Um, I, I, I don't know. Okay. What do others think? I mean, do they think that that gives a, an undue advantage? That's I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm agnostic. I don't necessarily think it gives an undue advantage because we share the interview questions in advance and because we are not deliberating at the meeting. Um, I think those, if we were doing either of those things, it would, but um, because we are not, I, I don't think that it does. Another thing, just, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just confirming that yeah. we, we voted the interview questions for finance, but we did not vote them for the charter mm -hmm. committee um, according to my, my data. So we can edit those. Um, can I ask a question about the process? Again, my understanding is that we ask, if we have 20 people, say we have 25 people in front of us and we decide to do it in one night. First question, all 25 people answer that question. Second question, all 25 people answer that question. Um, that is the way we're going to do it, right? Uh, that was the way that we did it when we, so the, the closest experience that I have with this is when we had the school committee uh, appointment. And so that was, I think, what was it like 10 people, Pat, maybe? I think uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and that was how we did it, was every single person answered every single question. Then we, and we switched up the order um, of who answered the question. And I'd be, I think that that would be smart to do is not just go down the line every single time. Um, I think that personally we should split it into two nights, uh, nine people per night. It's, it's a long meeting, but I think that that's fine. Um, and yeah. Can I offer an alternative? And I, I, it's been a while since I thought about this, but what if we did, rather than do the same question with all the people, um, since they have the questions in advance, we bring each individual into the room and we ask them the questions and then we go on to the next person and the next person, the next person. Why can't we do that? Why can't we just have a one-on-one? A -on -one? Everybody knows what the questions are. Everyone's had the questions in advance. Um, why do we make them sit there uh, and listen to you know 15 other answers why not do them the respect of you know so you tell you tell them look we're doing these interviews tuesday night between seven and, and eight or what seven and nine and here's the order and uh just please be here by such and such a time and when their time comes up we bring them into the room we ask them the questions then we move on to the next person why can't we do it that way what's wrong with that Nothing's wrong with it, George. I actually think that's a really compelling idea. Yeah. Um, and then we can give people time slots based on the number of questions. Right. I mean, the of time that, yeah, but I may be missing something, but I just don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it, but I would suggest either way that we have deliberation on a separate evening, then listen to I 20 agree. people and then deliberate. I agree. So we divide it into two groups and, and we meet individually with each one of them. Right. And yeah almost like a hearing style, the way that that works of like you have your start time. Councilor Ette? Um, thank you. This is a very uh, fruitful di discussion. On Tuesday, we had some interviews as well. There were seven and it was exhausting with just seven. Um, and so I think what we should be looking at is um, a couple of nights for the interview and deliberation would not be on either of those nights. So we should be looking at about three um, separate meetings for this. 
Yep. Okay, so we're gonna look at three meetings. Um, we're going to need to cut our questions down. I'm just gonna say that right now. Um, we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 questions. Um, so I'm going to recommend we either cut those down or we give them a minute to answer each one. Um, I do think that ideally in my mind, and this is kind of arbitrary, but ideally in my mind, each interview would be about 15 minutes. Um, does that seem too short? I, I think that that feels. Seems too long. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, 10 minutes, it should be more than enough. Um, right. Anyway, I'm sorry. 15 minutes. Times, yeah, it's it's a little over two hours. I mean, <laughs> one question I have, and I, I I'm sorry, Anna, but I still don't. I haven't seen, or maybe it's not there, but I haven't seen actually our list of of questions. I have something that I, where is it? I maybe I just I it's uh, there and I just didn't find it. It's I, not in this packet. It would have been in an old packet, I believe. It was in an old packet. Okay, then um, I do have it somewhere. I apologize. I it wasn't didn't. in this packet because I wasn't anticipating that we would get into to it. To tonight, sure. Yeah, and so... I thought so, you were going to edit it. I thought you were going to go through it and, and tidy it up a bit. And maybe you... I, don't I did. Let me put it back in the packet for the next meeting. Um, I, I just accepted the track changes that we made in the meeting. I didn't oh, okay. right. do much beyond that. But um, let me put it in the packet for a future meeting. Um, I got a next meeting's looking a, a bit more unwieldy than I think was intentional. Well, so. Anna, would it be useful for us to do it right now? I mean, are people up for that? I mean, uh, just put it on the screen and let's let's take a whack at it. Um, it is on our agenda, so we can do that, sure. Yeah, it's, I don't know. What do people feel? Do they want to I do think it? it's I think worth looking at and figuring out what are the essential things yeah. we need to know, not, you know. Right. We have a half an hour left. I would rather spend that half an hour finalizing or, or at least getting closer on our interview questions um, than doing the um, town manager evaluation. It feels more pressing in my mind than that. So I'm going to prioritize that. Um, if you did your homework for this week, I'm very, very grateful to you. And I want to talk about it. George, we can't do it. I did my teacher. I did my homework. Come on. I'm so proud of you. Good job, gold star. I get a gold star. Hang on to that. That means you have less homework to do this week. So uh, I yeah. doubt it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can give you three more if you want. All right. Mm -hmm. So, but I'd rather spend the time focusing on this. Let's 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 do the the questions here. Gosh, I hope I did what I was supposed to do. I thought I thought I did, but now I'm not sure. Okay. Um, here is what we've got. If I didn't do what I was supposed to do, uh, then I will apologize profusely and do it for next time. Um, and if my computer starts to lag, uh, Athena, I will share this document with you. So far, it seems to be cooperating with me. All right, charter review, committee interview questions. Let's take a minute to re-familiarize ourself, ourselves. Um, Athena, what I will do is send this to you as a PDF to put in the packet, and I apologize. I should have had it in there anyway. Let's start with this first section, just this first section, please. Councilor Ryan. I think we do want something. I think we do want a question. I mean, if we look at the broad categories, I mean, ideally, if we could just have four questions. One, well, oops, I'm, <laughs> I scroll down. There's a fifth one. I was trying to. I right. was trying to make sure folks saw that that was. If we could just compress each one of these to one question. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is to think just practically. If you want, trying to keep this to a reasonable length of time per person, mm -hmm. and you want to give people a chance to to answer, um, you can't have more than five or six questions, right? How many did CRC have for your candidates? I don't remember. Um, I'm pausing for a second. I just want to pull up the, and I don't want to do it on the thing because I didn't put it in the packet. Yes, and, that uh, name will probably know. We yeah. Uh, Councillor uh, or, or Councillor Ate, did you have an answer to that? So they were eight questions of substance and two questions 
Oh, that's right. Where flimsy. Yeah, kind of yes or no. Yes or no. That's 10 questions. That's, yeah. <laughs> well, I, maybe others think that's great, but I mean, I mean, imagine two, two hours into this and you're working your way through question number seven. I do think that 15. we don't want to cut it down to the getting what we need. Oh, sorry. That's where, yeah, we're starting Let's off. see if we can edit each edit, category yeah. down and then see how many we have. Right. Because if right now, to if we have two in each category, we can still look at it again, but you know, not to start at all. Right. Doesn't okay. make any sense. Um, sorry, I just had to share this with Athena because my computer started glitching. But it's like figuring out what is the most important piece of right. this or combined piece of this question. Okay. So I would opt for B in under charter. That would be the one that I would think would be the most important. Yeah, let's see. I thought, may I just speak or like go? Go oh, ahead, Pat. Speak. If it start, it, it counts the Ryan. I get to decide that. Uh, <laughs> Pat, go ahead and speak. But if it starts to get unwieldy, I'm going to enforce hands. Yeah, it's just I can't see. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it seems to me is what what's your experience? Are um, or what's your thoughts about the charter? Are there particular areas you see as strengths or weaknesses? Um, the role of the charter committee, we're going to be saying that to them over and over again. You can't change this. You can't change, you know, it's like, so do we really need a question that asks them whether they know what's already been in the documents? I agree, Pat. I would prefer question A because I feel that regardless of their understanding of the role, their understanding of the role of the charter committee does not change the role of the charter committee. So whether or not they did their homework to know what that role is, they are still bound by that role. Um, and so for me, I see priority being where, what's your experience been? Because that's gonna get more at our selection guidance. Councilor Ryan. I think B is, we're trying to get, we're trying to get at what, what they think and know. So it's it's not so much about the charter review. We, you know, we want to understand, we want to get a sense of what have they done any? I just want to have hear what they think about what they think the role of the charter review committee is. Just tell me. And the fact that they've got it completely wrong or they completely misunderstand it is important information. Um a bothers me because it's kind of like already we're getting into like, tell us what you want to change. Tell us what you want to keep. And it's like, why not go through the process before you decide? It's like in a jury, right? And you know, some juries, I guess, you come in and immediately everybody takes a vote, guilty or innocent. I think the good juries start with just let's look at the evidence. Let's find out what the, you know, right? So I'm, I'm, I don't like A, but maybe I'm the only one. Um, I'm really not interested in their views at this point I want to find out do they know anything about the Charter Review Committee just very simple tell me what your understanding of the role of the Charter Review Committee is. Councilor Ryan can I ask why you're you are emphasizing their understanding of the committee versus the charter itself because um I don't think they really have read the charter carefully most of them and I, I would I don't think that's a bad thing I think that's a sign of probably a reasonable human being um <laughs> and um, but they will be reading it and they will be guided through it very carefully by Athena and others. Um, so I'm not worried about that. But I'm what I want to do is get a sense of where they're coming from um, can, about the committee. Can we hear from Councillor Ette? We can, but I want to raise my hand first. And and if Councillor Ette has something to add, I, I, yeah, I'm sure he will hand. also raise his hand. Um, I think the my thought, George, is I, I have a really similar inclination to you in terms of what I want to know, but my concern or my my confidence in what they will learn is actually in the other direction. Oh my gosh. Um, sorry, I'm going to stop sharing for a second because my computer is giving me the spinning wheel of death. Um, so my confidence is that they will be shepherded through this process of what the committee can and can't do. And 
I would rather know they don't have to have read the whole charter and maybe getting rid of that second part that says, you know, are there particular areas you see as strengths and weaknesses or missing elements? That's fine. And just asking what their experience with the charter has been is enough. But for me, I want to know more about how they've, in so I'm, I'm bringing this back to our selection guidance, right? Of how, we want people with a variety of different experiences in terms of how they've experienced the charter. And so for me, that's, that's more telling than have you read the committee charge and do you understand it? Because even if they don't understand it, they can't go beyond it. So I, I think that's, that's where I get stuck in preferring question A. Um, Athena, are you able to pull this up by any chance? I shared it with you on, um, in your email. Um, I didn't, I don't have it in here. I'm checking now. I like, I just did it. Just... Sorry, all my internet is uncooperative. Councillor Ete, Pat, any thoughts about this? Strong feelings? Council, yeah. Council I'm stumped because I do agree that A and B are stronger questions. C is a question we could ask if we had as much time as we needed, but in the absence of time, it boils, I think, to A and B, and there's strong or good reasons why we could have either. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. Let me peculate on that for a bit. Anna, your email hasn't come up. When I see it, I can pull it up. Sorry. Maybe and I prefer A. Okay. Here's and one. I prefer B. So, yeah, but I am the document. <laughs> I'm going to pull it up. Just give me a second. What I'm going to say for right now is we started with the most important, arguably the most important question bank. Um, so I think what I would like to suggest is that we tentatively delete the question of how do you see the charter impacting different populations, leave the first two and come back to those if we need to in the end. But right now let's just leave the first two and move on to the other sections. Um, Athena, I'm going to try sending you a link instead and see if that works. Sorry, so apologies. Okay. The next section is prior exper uh, prior experiences. Um, let me try sharing again and turning my video off to see if that helps. So my first thought here as I read this is I think questions A and B could be combined just to say what experiences or skills do you bring that might be helpful to the group? Have you he ever held elective office? Ex had experience in town government, served on any town boards and committees? Or I, I think these can all be squished, right? Like this first question is getting at these. Um, right. So, other so could we just keep the first question and make sure that we share the selection guidance that emphasizes engagement in town government, engagement as volunteers, et cetera? Uh, so I'm sorry. Um, Anna, if I may, um, what you'd like to do is connect D with B. Is that right? Uh, I would either like to keep A or D. I think that they're pretty much the same question phrased different ways. Um, I think that B and C are asking about specific experiences mm -hmm. that we might find helpful, but um, they could bring up by answering either A or D. Mm -hmm. And I think we. Can I think. Excuse me. Say, I'm Good. sorry, uh, Pat. Yeah, um, I think we should go with D. It's, it is the same as A, only it's stated in a better way. Okay. Do you think that we could add experiences and or skills? No, because they're in there. It aren't. No, it's not. It's just to bring it to this, right? I don't think you need those, but I wouldn't. I don't object okay. if they're there. Okay. Okay, this is the tentative change now. All right. 
I'm gonna okay. I don't even want to touch this one. Um, I want to touch it. <laughs> all right, you go. Uh, I would like to get rid of it all. Uh, the question about students and college towns and what you like, that shouldn't even be in there. How okay. do you stay informed and up to date about town affairs? That might be interesting. I don't, you know. Um, yeah. right. But I think there is. Good. Let's take A out and leave B. Yeah. Okay, uh, work style charter commit. Oh, you can read. Sorry. Yep. We've got these are the same thing. This is the same thing. I think we can pick one of A, B, or C. I like A. Yeah, I like A too. Rebecca. Rebecca, any thoughts? Councilor Attic, excuse me. So this question, especially, I think something like E was asked on Tuesday uh -huh. and only one out of the seven gave an answer that was more than waffling. <laughs> more than what? I'm sorry. Waffling. Everybody has worked in groups, but only one person um, spoke specifically about hmm. an okay. instance within a group of something that was done. Um, Would you think B might be better then? So experience with a group, working with a group, public or private? I think it's Or collaborating same. with a group? Maybe C, um, I don't know. I think B. Hmm. Or, or maybe, but perhaps the difference is, what did you find challenging? So it isn't enough to say, I work well with groups. What do you find challenging about right. working with a group? So maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, what about I, C, which highlights controversy, conflict, and trying to resolve it, collaboration? Oh, everybody's got a good story. I like what uh, Councillor Ate is saying better. Uh, for which one again? A. Eh? The question of what did you like and what did you find challenging? Councilor Arte, am I understanding you correctly that, that those were the compelling parts of A that you, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the question isn't just tell us about an experience you okay. had with the group, but what worked well and what was challenging. So you like A, that's what, okay, I missed yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I think we're, that's, that's where we're circling is to okay. keep A, okay. get rid of B, okay. get rid of C. Okay. So then we are... Definitely D. I really like D and I'd like I really to hate D. You hate it? <laughs> yes. Why? Okay. Tell me why. I'm, I'm shut up. Let me shut up. I'm sorry. No, Tell no, us no, why, no, no. Why, why do you like D? I like D because I think that it allows us to look for, for um, when we look at our selection guidance, we wanted to make sure we had a broad variety of perspectives. Mm -hmm. And one of the key elements in this charter committee was the ability right. to do community outreach. And so for me, this is important. Good. And I think that it, it covers E. Um, yes. Okay. So I think we could get rid of E, but keep D. Yeah, get rid of E because people always have a no pun intended pat answer on that one anyway. So it's not a valuable question. Good. Good. Um, I don't think we need this. No, we don't. I think the committee. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Etta, your hand was up. Oh, um, it was just to agree with eliminating E. So the question asked was on Tuesday, what is your approach to public input? Someone said every case is different. Someone else said, listen to everybody, consider all viewpoints. Um, another person, it is important to get input from everyone. So um, helpful. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's not much that can be gained with that question. Yeah. Thank you. That's really helpful feedback. Thank you. Um, Okay, so uh, I think that we should, under the miscellaneous category, get rid of A because yep. the committee will determine their own times to meet. It does not, we are not responsible for that. And I I mean, B is fine. B is I good. like B. I think ending with B is important. Good. All right, so let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Seven Final. is. Hear me out. That it's it's still longer than what George wants. But if we if we give three minutes per question, that's twenty I, minutes per person. Yeah, I think you only minutes. want to give a minute or two. 
Oh gosh. Okay. Two minutes. Two I, minutes. I, one minute is way too short. No, yeah. one is too short. Yes. Two minutes is fine. Two minutes is brutal, but okay. Um, well, it's like I'm thinking about public comment. Yeah, it go sometimes when somebody has three minutes, they go on and on and on. Right. And know and that they have two minutes. They really. What is the most important thing about what I want to say? Yeah. We still yeah. might be able to and cut seven down. Yeah. I don't know whether you can see it on the Athena has her hand raised. I apologize, my computer froze and I missed the last 30 seconds. Uh, Athena, your hand is up. I was just gonna mention that the council did the school committee interviews and did a minute per question. That was pretty effective. Actually went really smoothly, I thought. All right, all right. We did one minute, really? Wow. Yeah. Um, okay, then I can be convinced of two. <laughs> About 90 seconds. All right. All right. Let's not get silly here. I, I think 90 seconds is a bit tough to hold to. Two minutes on seven questions would be basically 15, 15. minutes. Uh, and we have to say hello and goodbye. So it becomes up to 20 minutes 20 per minutes. person. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would rather get rid of a question than drop this to a minute. Really? I, that's me. I'm not the whole committee. I'm I'm saying I'm saying that because I think what we're asking, I mean some of these questions are multiple multiple questions in one, right? What's your experience with the charter? Are there areas you see as strengths, weaknesses or missing elements? And to answer that in one question one minute is really tough. And while yeah. I think that it did move through the school committee interviews went fast. Um, I don't know that, I, I think one minute's really hard. I'm really, one minute's really tough. Okay. I don't know, I could be convinced. Councilor Ate? I think we could eliminate the last question with miscellaneous, which is tell us, um, some some other thing about yourself that makes you a strong candidate. But within the questions, we already have opportunities to speak to some strengths. Hmm. So um, what are you, sorry, could you repeat what you're pitching again? I think I missed that. Just uh, delete the last question. The last one? Mm. I really, I would advocate for the last one because I think in case there's something that we didn't ask that they right. really want to make sure we know, I think that's kind of that catch all question. I don't know that everyone will take advantage of it. Um, and we could change it to, is there anything else you would like us to know instead of what else would you like us to know? But I think that if there's something that people didn't have the opportunity to say that they think it's very important that we know, um, that's where I, I want to, I want to give them that opportunity. My pitch for getting rid of a question would be, how do you stay informed and up to date on town affairs? Hmm. I could get rid of that one too. Councillor Ryan. I would really like to have some sense of how people learn about our town. Okay. I, I I guess if we have to drop one, maybe that's the one that'll have to go. But I would I, I don't think there's a right answer. I don't know what the answer would be. I know what I my answer would be, but I'd be curious to hear what other people's answers are. Um and give us a sense to what degree they um you know are engaged. I, I mean that was kind of the idea behind volunteering and you know, mm -hmm. service on board. Are you engaged in our town? Um and just tell us a little bit about that. But this is one way to do it. But didn't we just ask that with what experience? No, we, we, yeah. I'm not, okay. I'm not changing. I think we did that, but I'd like to keep this if we could. Okay. All right. I hear you. Um, I have a question for CRC members and then Councilor Arte, I want to hear your comment, which is how, how long did you give folks again to respond to questions? Do you remember? I don't know if we had a time set. Oh, you lucky ducks. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ate, what was your comment? Yeah, so that's true. We did leave that open. 
Um, but to, to go back, this question that I um, would like to see removed was question eight for us. And um, one of the answers that we had was someone saying that they have a passion for zoning issues in town. Of course, this is an interview for the ZBA. My hope would be that you have a passion for zoning. Um, someone else mentioned having two years ZBA experience, which was in a statement. Another person, four years, someone mentioned being committed to serving the community. Another person has uh, nine years. And actually, there was only one person who gave an answer that you could say was startling. And the person mentioned that they were a strong supporter of in-person meetings rather than just meetings on Zoom. Um, and so there wasn't anything that was added in answering this question. Okay, I have a thought. Um, I hear what you're saying. When we did the school committee interviews, we gave folks one minute to give an opening statement and one minute to give a closing statement. That is something that we do not have in this. We could offer a minute to give a closing statement in lieu of that last question. Um, people can reiterate strong points that they've already made uh, or say whatever they want, but we can say you have one minute to make a closing statement if you'd like it. And we give them that ahead of time. Would that be something that people would be comfortable with? Councilor Ryan. I think with school committee, the idea is that you're running for office and you're making a pitch. So your closing statement is kind of your, you know, here's what I stand for and please vote for me. Um, here, I think we're asking them questions to try and get a better understanding of whether we think they would be an excellent candidate for this body. Um, and I, I kind of like the question the way it stands or just get rid of it. I think as giving people a minute for a closing statement sounds like you're making an argument or a pitch and actually okay. I, I, I resist that. If the rest of the committee would like to make this one minute, I, I will respect democratic process and get outvoted. Is that, would people want to keep responses to one minute? Councilor Ryan. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have raised my hand. I don't know. I, it's yeah, no, I don't. You know, know. Yeah, um, some people will. Some people I've experienced will talk forever. Oh, I won't let that happen. Um, and um, they just, you know, and you just have to say thank you that that your time is up. Um, if we have two minutes and we have seven questions, it's essentially a twenty minute exercise per person. Um, hmm. It's not the end of the world, but you know, given twenty people. Mm -hmm. um that's 400 minutes that's uh what that's a lot of hours it's six hours yeah two, that's, two, that's two, three two. hours per two nights so if we can find a way i'm not sure that more time means better answers okay i see that point and you know you as chair assuming you were the, i assume you'd be the one asking the questions that's um, what we did you can also use your judgment and maybe give somebody another 20 seconds if they're on a roll, but I don't know. I don't know. I am will be consistent. In my be. <laughs> That's um, right. That's fair. I agree. Yeah. All right. If folks would like to to make this a one minute response, we can make it a one minute one minute response. If we can get it down to five, then I'd go for two. But I think at the moment we have seven, I think at least. So unless we I, can out. I see your point. I do see your point. Yeah, I see that point, but I also feel I'm not ready to say one minute. Um, we don't even know if all 18 people, you know, we keep talking about 20 and 25, all of which is possible. Um, but I, I have what I feel like what's more possible is 16 out of the 18 are going to actually want to do this when it comes to it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. It is 926. I'm going to say we write you will have one to two minutes to answer each question um, and pause it at that point. Yeah. And I think we should get rid of the last question. I really would, I will, I will vote against that motion. I would like to keep it in there. I think that it's important because I do think that even though, you know, I, I hear what you said on that 
uh, on on what you hear for ZBA, but you also did hear from one person something that was helpful. Right. And well, let's vote on it. Fine, hang uh, on. Do, do you want to uh, do that now? Or I think you were going to take these questions, shrink them to the number, and then we're going to look at it next next time. I'm about to make us go back to raising hands between the two of you. So uh, we will. I will send you a final copy for the next one. I will not be at that meeting. I would like to voice for the record my strong opposition to getting rid of that last question. And I'm concerned about putting this on the next meeting agenda because I don't want it off there and I'd like to be able to vote on it. So I'm just, I'm naming that now. Um, but I will, I will accept the changes that we talked about today and I will send an updated copy to um, Athena for the next packet. And if I have to call in to die on that hill, I will call in to die on that hill. Uh, Councilor Ryan. Would you like us? We could vote on it. I could make a motion, um, but I, it would be just for that particular item. I think it would be 2-2 two, two, because I would, I'm I with you. I think so too. Yeah, I would, I I'm with you. I would ask that we keep it. No, we're really going to make me leave my vacation event oh, I think we're stuck. to fall into this meeting next week. You're killing me. DeAngelis, we're going to have a conversation. All right. Um, we, so it does not sound like people would like to vote on this tonight. We would vote on the entire set of questions tonight. Am I hearing a motion for that? No. Okay. Councilor Ate, you unmuted. Um, I think your support is heard. <laughs> Even by me. Oh, shit. <laughs> And then, yeah, and the, there is a space for that question, and I think it can be kept, but I think we could hold off until the next meeting and until you have pared down the list to something manageable. Okay. Um, what I would like to do, oh man. Um, all right. So I'm going to accept the deletions that we made and send this out um, for the next packet. Uh, Councilor Ryan? At the very bottom, we describe the, as at least the document I saw earlier, the process we're going to follow. Yes. Right, right, would you be willing to put into it the suggestion that we're going to interview each person serially. We're going to, okay. Yes, um, okay, so we're going to say, oh yeah, because right now it says all applicants will exactly. answer each question after it is asked. So we're going to instead phrase it as all applicants um, will answer all questions. How do you, how did you phrase it? Um, we're just going to enter each applicant will be interviewed separately. You'll be given a uh, a specific time when you'll be brought into the Zoom meeting. Something like and that. maybe something like each candidate will be asked the same question during their right. interview and, or something. And interviewed yeah. serially, and you'll be given a specific time. Um, I think that makes sense. I think it sounds like everyone, at least present this evening, agrees. Um, but we'll vote on that, I guess, next time. But. Each candidate will be interviewed separately at a specific time given via Zoom. Uh, yeah. And then, again, it's important, Pat's point, they'll be asked the same questions. So everyone will be asked the same questions and but interviewed separately. Something like that. Yep, okay. got it. Okay. Okay. Um, we still need to figure out the time issue. One to two minutes is what I have in there now. Uh, we can edit that as needed. I think what, here's what I would like you to do. I'd like you to read these questions and I'd like you to pretend you're an applicant, answer them as you wanna answer them and time yourself. And if you can give an answer that you as an interviewer would find helpful in one minute, I will, and I will do the same thing. I, we will be happy with one minute. If it takes you two, Takes you two, no more than two.
Oh, Councilor Ate, sorry, I did call you, but then I think my computer froze. Okay, yeah, I think I'm fine with having one or two because if one is going to privilege those who are swift of speech mm -hmm. and um, which isn't necessarily the same thing as being better prepared. They are those who just can speak fast and can feel, mm -hmm. feel the time with words. Mm -hmm. So one or two leaves room for those who have fewer or more things to say. And if we are interviewing by block and we have a cut of time for each interview, then it might be the case that for some of the questions, candidates might be more interested in speaking on some questions more than others. And so the total time might be the same rather than just making it um, discreet in maybe one minute for each question. As someone who can fill any time allotted with any words, I hear what you're saying. It is 9.32 and I'd like to be respectful of time. I think this is one of the first times I've gone over, so I apologize for that. We're going to stop it here tonight. I will set, I will accept the changes that we've made. I will keep one to two minutes in there unless people are feeling ready to vote on this with those changes right now. No, we're not ready. Okay. Um, for your next meeting, for our next meeting, I will have, I just, I'm confirming this verbally to you all. You will have an updated questions list. I'm going to put the selection guidance back in the file for the next meeting. Um, we will have a CAFS list as a reminder that is not a public document, um, but that will be, I'm going to pull those and I'll confirm the list with Athena. Um, you will have I went done- ahead and, I went ahead and posted the oh, lists. I sent everybody links. Thank you so Thank much. You. You. Um, you will have the um, nuisance bylaw as well to discuss next week. And then if you get to town manager evaluations, you get to town manager evaluations. But I think that you get, you've got a lot on there. I will also send you a draft calendar um, with some options for interview dates based on this. Draft calendar, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you all so much. I apologize for keeping you over time. Is there no, anything? No, no, that you don't need to apologize for that. This, I do. I, no, 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 no. It does happen. Well, so. yeah, but now you're wasting it. No. All right. I'm Enough. To... I would like to move to adjourn at 9:34 p.m. Is there a second? We have to do the thing. Is there second. a second? Thank you. Second, DeAngelis. Uh, calling the vote. Pat. Aye. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Councillor Ette. Aye. And I am an aye. Thank you all very much. I will Thank not. Thank you. Be Thank you, Anna. Thanks for watching. You've got this. All right. Thanks, y'all. Have a good night.